Okay, so I'm here with two distinguished guests. Uh, are both of you located in, uh, in California? Yep. Sure. So you are practically in the other side of the globe from Tel Aviv, right. where I'm located. Um, I'm here with uh, Idaro Sylvester and uh, a very distinguished guest, Lou Covey. And we are going to talk um, today about, uh, for the next 25, 30 minutes, about one of the most interesting topics I can find to talk about, which is the future of media. And uh, binded to it, of course, is the future of marketing, which means that we are actually talking about the future of business in a global economy and world. Absolutely. Um, so I'll give a, a short open, a uh, uh, couple of opening statements that will um, uh, hopefully turn this discussion to a more heated debate than a usual conference. Mm -hmm. Um, in the last several years, there are some, uh, let's call it this way, best practices in the industry. Um, one is that social uh, um, media are going to save the world. Two, uh, video is the best thing that ever happened since sliced bread. Three, uh, the world is so flat that you can basically, regardless of where you're located, you can do business anywhere. Um, the best thing about these three assumptions is that none of them is measurable, which is, of course, makes very, very easy just to tell them out loud in blogs and democratization and content and so on and so forth. <laughs> um, now, we're supposed, the name of the event is 2025. We're talking about how the world of media and marketing will look in the year 2025. And when we're looking at the seri a bit seriously about these topics, we say that Already now, marketeers and media companies are losing their ability to control screens. Mm -hmm. they, uh, people create their own content, talk with their friends, do whatever they want, basically. And the guys from Fox, uh, NBC, uh, Axel Springer, uh, they can't control it anymore. Um, so, Lou, what do you think going to be the future of marketing? Will there be any marketing in the year 2025? Well, of course there will be. There's it's just no marketing right now. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, one of the premise about this was that media is, is disappearing or disintegrating, and that's not true. Uh, media is growing almost exponentially now. Uh, I mean, ev in all forms, uh, ev even print, uh, there's like a, a new daily newspaper being launched every month in India. Okay. Uh, no media has really gone away. There have been maybe three or four major American newspapers that have gone under, but there are still hundreds still in operation. Okay, the, what's disintegrating is the the financial model that per, that that promotes all that stuff, uh, because advertising is going down, and that has been the traditional model that has kept media going. Uh, but they're just becoming unprofitable right now, they're trying to figure out how to work in it. And I think it's actually coming around to that. Uh, we're seeing media grow through social media, through through the web, through video. Uh, no Television stations are still broadcasting, newspapers are still publishing, but we've got an entirely new medium to work with, multiple mediums to work with, and many people can do it. You know, like, we've got a television studio right here in my office, and we're broadcasting live. Uh, that doesn't mean media is disintegrating, but we have to learn, number one, how to make this pay. That's number one. And number two, we actually have to learn how to communicate. Um, about 15 years ago, I sat down with the provost of uh, a school of business from a major university and said, okay, what are you doing to prepare people to do, to communicate in the business world? And she proudly showed me this brochure of a two-week seminar that all MBA students were required to take on public relations two weeks out of a two-year program on communication, okay? And the thing is, it worked then, because then all you had to do is throw out a, a couple of press releases and maybe go to a trade show, put out a couple of uh, contributor articles, and suddenly the world was beating a path to your door. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, and people can't get by on two weeks of training on how to put out a press release. You're really going to have to learn to communicate or hire people who know how. That is that is correct. And Ida, how do you see Idaros? How do you see this area? 
Well, I feel very much like Lou that marketing, marketing and media is anything but dead. I think we're about to have a renaissance in how we do marketing because of the mistakes that we're currently making. Um, to, to your point, Fear, the world is flatter. It's not flat at all yet. It never will be. <laughs> yes, we have global independencies. We are doing something like this where you and I are 10 time zones apart and we're still able to talk to each other. But I'm enjoying my morning coffee and you're probably waiting for your dinner. We still have time zones issues that separate us. And there you go. See, Lou and I are in the same time zone enjoying our coffee. <laughs> so the world isn't that I, I, I... <laughs> But we, we're making this assumption that it, it is. Uh, but I think some of the tools that we've come to rely on, um, we have language translators that make us all think we are able to speak any language. We have social media, which has dumbed down our cultural awareness. You know, hey, dude, everyone's equal on Twitter, <laughs> and we're not. Um, we're using these tools that make us think that the world is flat while we're ignoring the assumptions that time zones, language, and culture are still prohibiting us from actually connecting on a true global scale. Oh, I was laughing before that because I wanted to tell you that I'm waiting for my beer and I just can't <laughs> raise the glass because I don't think it's really appropriate in such an event. But um, I completely agree with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here at, at, at Rad. I, I'm here at, at Rad Vision office. It's not that I'm taking with me a huge placard of, of Rad Vision to every bar that I'm going to. Um, <laughs> I'm. I want to talk a bit about about the iPad, not only as a platform, but as a as a concept, because iPad and mm -hmm. internet in general, these tools are basically changing the way that media is being distributed and controlled. And one of the things that you said, Lou, was very, very interesting. You said, we need to learn how to communicate, and that will be, that's beyond technology, right? That's beyond time. That's only how people should know how to talk with each other, how to get people excited, um, however, what we see in, uh, in, in some of the things we're doing, I'm also teaching in a university here, and we are um, asking students to create multi, uh, basically transmedia projects. So they have to tell the story in, on various platforms. And um, we see that while a lot of the things are uh, universal or basic human, regardless of whether they're on Facebook or Twitter or in whatever we're going to be in 2025, Still, the, the delivery method, the way that people interact is completely different between these, uh, between these platforms. And I'm wondering, let's say that we have now um, the ability, well, 20, uh, 2025 is 15 years from now, it's not that far. So let's say we have a, a three-year-old kid and we have uh, uh, 15 years to, to train him and him or her and, and, and teach all the things that we can that should be uh, um, universal and technology independent. What will we teach him or her on how to be a better marketeer, how to be a better media consumer or creator? How do you see it? Well, I'll take this one. Um, they're already there, Kafir. Um, <laughs> they don't need us. <laughs> Go <I'm>, home. <laughs> there are videos take of a little babies playing with iPads already, three-year-olds that are already yeah, it's Naturally completely, it's completely intuitive it. for them. Um, let's take a look at it generationally. Okay, you take the baby boomers. That's me. Okay, uh, we're used to newspapers. We're used to wireline te telephones. Uh, we're pretty much used to television. Okay, we're used to receiving our information. We're bottle-fed mm -hmm. information. That's how we're used to it. Okay. Um, but when you get into the Generation Xers, there is this... Um, uh, Confer, uh, this, this transfer over where they're still kind of in our area, but they started to get pagers and they started to get cell phones and things like that. But they, they still use the same basic uh, uh, ways of um, uh, having communication. Okay, but then you get into the generation wires, the millennials, okay? They grew up with cell phones. They grew up with chat. They grew up with MySpace, okay? They're already participating in the medium that we have created for them, and they're doing it better than we are. But it's actually changing the, the how people communicate all together. It's taking it back to a very natural form. The most natural form of communication, or the original form of communication, is what we're doing right here. We're having a conversation. Okay, That's what's natural for human beings. 
social media is very much a conversational medium where people have